Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. The Intentions of the Holy Father for the month of August for World Youth Day. We pray the World Youth Day in Lisbon will help young people to live and witness the Gospel in their own lives. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we prepare ourselves to enter in the presence of the Lord, as we get ready to welcome this new day, let us close our eyes at this moment and let us praise the Lord. Let us thank Him. Let us glorify Him for all the wonders that He has done for us in our lives, for all that He is doing and for all that He will continue to do for us. And therefore today, let us praise the Lord, first and foremost, that He has woken us up in the morning. He has given us a new day, a new day to experience His love, a new day to cherish His blessings and graces, and most importantly, a new day to experience His love and mercy. And therefore, as we begin this day, let us begin with this attitude of gratitude. Very often we see that we take things for granted. We may not notice the small blessings that we receive along the way. There are times we can get caught up with our busy schedule, with various things that happen around us. And this may prevent us from actually recognizing the presence of God in our lives. Therefore, as we spend time looking at events, looking at various activities that we do, if we look with them closely, we'll be able to see the presence of God in them. And therefore, first and foremost, let us thank the Lord for giving us good health, for protecting us and keeping us safe all through the night. He has always kept us in His love. And at every moment, His gaze is upon us. He loves us and He always is guiding us and protecting us. And for that, let us praise Him. Let us thank Him and let us glorify Him. And therefore, let us also thank Him for the other things that He does for us in our lives. For example, we thank Him for the gift of life, for giving us various talents, abilities, for giving us people around us, our friends, relatives, 
near and dear ones, family members and all those who play a very important role in our lives. Let us also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that He has given us. Opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others, opportunities to grow, opportunities to develop our gifts. We also thank Him for the experiences that He has given us. Of course, there may be experiences which have been difficult, tough, but nonetheless they have made us stronger, they have taught us something valuable in life. And therefore we need to thank the Lord for these experiences. Let us also thank the Lord for giving us good health, for protecting us, for always showing us the way. We see that during times of difficulties, it is the Lord who guides us. But for this to happen, first and foremost, we need to listen to what God is trying to tell us. And once we listen to his call, we need to surrender ourselves to him. And this will imply placing our faith and trust in the Lord. And therefore, as we prepare ourselves to enter into this morning offering, try to spend some time talking to Jesus, telling him about your difficulties, about your struggles, about what is going on in your life. And Jesus, who has said, Come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus will give us the peace of mind that we all long for. And my dear friends, we pray that this day may be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore today we shall reflect and meditate on Psalm 53 which is once again a lament psalm that is written by David. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall go into detail. Now, Psalm 53 focuses on the folly and wickedness of those who deny the existence of God. Now, this psalm is very similar to Psalm 14 and both psalms express the idea the denial of God's existence is a root cause of human wickedness. And therefore we see that overall Psalm 53 expresses the idea that human wickedness arises because we are not willing to listen to what God is trying to tell us. But on the contrary, we try to push forward our own agenda. Psalm 53 also expresses the fact that God will eventually bring salvation to his people. Now David will contrast the foolishness and wickedness of those who deny God with the faith and hope of those who trust him. And therefore we see that the psalm will emphasize the importance of recognizing God's existence and turning towards righteousness. At the same time, it will also tell us to hope and trust in the salvation that comes from God. Now, verse 1 begins with the declaration that the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now, we see that this statement is a key theme of the psalm. And here we see that David emphasizes the point that those who deny God are fools. Those who deny God are corrupt and in a way they have committed themselves to abominable deeds and therefore he says that it is absolutely foolish to deny the existence of God God who does everything for us in our lives and if we deny him if we fail to recognize him then it's absolutely foolishness therefore he says the fool says in his heart and therefore we see that this is an important aspect of the psalm now verse 2 and 3 continue with David's description of those who deny God's existence. What does David say? David says that they are corrupt and have no understanding and they have turned away from righteousness and become completely corrupt. And this has been their own doing. And therefore he compares them to a people who eat up God's people like bread and do not call upon the Lord. 
So, th this is exactly what happens when we tend to place our faith and trust in the worldly things. When we think that our gadgets, our technology can help us, can do everything and anything for us. And eventually we see that sometimes when all these things do not work, we are ultimately left with God. Because He never leaves us, He never abandons us, He is always there to guide and protect us. And therefore verse 4 will begin with a plea for God to intervene and bring salvation to his people. Now David notes here that those who deny God have not been called upon but that God will eventually bring salvation to his people. And therefore this whole aspect of salvation coming to those who have faith and trust in the Lord is an important aspect of this psalm. In verse 5, we have the conclusion of the psalm with the declaration of faith and hope. David notes that God will eventually restore his people and bring salvation to them. He also notes that his heart rejoices in God's salvation and that he will give thanks to God forever. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on this psalm, as we meditate, there may have been a few thoughts, a few verses which may have touched us, which may have made an impact during the time we were listening to the psalm. Let us go back to those thoughts, go back to those words and try to see what exactly touched you and what is God exactly trying to tell you through those words, through those thoughts. And try to apply it to your life and see what you need to do. And here you will realize that the Lord is telling us to place our faith and trust in Him. Because He is always there guiding us, protecting us. He will never abandon us. And therefore, my dear friends, as we spend a few moments in silence, reflecting, allowing the psalm to take root in us, let us thank the Lord, let us place our faith and trust in Him. And let us ask the Lord to be with us, guide us, help us in our moments of difficulties, in moments of trials, to be with us, to comfort us and most importantly to show us the way so that we may be able to radiate His love and mercy to the world around us. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, of the heavenly host by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union 
with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen